calling a regular meeting of Newberry Township Board of Supervisors to order. Please rise and uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Claire, just your phone drink. <laughs> Okay, uh, before we move on, we had two meetings this month doing interviews for the position of the manager. Uh, we, we had two, two executive sessions to do uh, manager position interviews. That's all I have right now. So I guess we'll start with public comment. Uh, I have an email here from Jason Christine from Dauber's Drive and Edders, and he's asking why does it take so long to get the board agendas, uh, agendas and minutes posted on the township websites. Other townships in our area are so much faster and timely with this task. Uh, right now, Jason, we're short on help in our office. Uh, we're in the process of hiring an office assistant, so hopefully next couple weeks we can get an assistant in place and hopefully we can get to that faster. And the second question is, is where can you get a copy of the audit report from last year? Uh, Andy, does he need to do a right to know act for that? Right to know request? Uh, he can if he wants the township to supply a, a copy of it. Okay, so if you want a copy of that, you'd have to do a right to know request. I have another question here from Barbara Whitehead from Midway Road, Newberry Township. Please tell me when the audit for the public will be on the township's website or be available for an immediate download. At this time, I don't know, so I guess there's a lot of questions about this since Andrew Pop from Newberry Town Breaking News had to bring it up. So, Andrew, what the deal is, is every year uh, we are required by the government, we are required by Pennsylvania law to do an audit of our books. Uh, that audit was started prior to the COVID outbreak. There's been delays due to the COVID outbreak. That audit is due to the state by July. However, due to the COVID and everything else going on, uh, it's been delayed a little bit this year, and we will let everybody know when that audit's available. As for the other audit that Mr. Pop keeps bringing up in Newburytown breaking news, that cannot be addressed at this time due to the fact that there is personnel and legal issues still involved in that audit. And once the legal issues are worked through, we will also make that audit available. This comes from Doug Bayshore at 25 Robert Paul Drive. Down due to the past and ongoing storm run water runoff from Robert Paul Drive causing erosion damage to my driveway and property along with sediment runoff to my neighbor's property. I would like to request a discussion evaluation of the situation with the proper township re representative. I have reached out before with limited response and really no action. After reviewing the township storm water management ordinance number 388 I don't feel as though the township is practicing best management practices. These are referred to countless times throughout the ordinance uh, as required by everyone else. You can reference the Newbury Township final subdivision plan for lot 2B1 Stone Manor for an overview of my property and please feel free to contact me for a discussion. Thank you for your time. Uh, Mr. Bayshore, we will have our highway, uh, um, highway department and our engineer get in touch with you uh, regarding this issue. And I, if I remember correctly, I think we looked at that before. I 
And as it stands right now, that's all the uh, emails that are on our website for public comment. So we're going to move on to the approval of the minutes from the Board of Supervisors meeting for the April minutes, the May 5th and May 26th, and the special meeting for May 13th. You want to do these separately or do you want to do them all as one? Do them all as one. Is that a motion? i make a motion, yep. <laughs> all second. All right, I got a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're going to get a report from the highway departments. Evening, everybody. Scott, can you pull that mic up a little bit? I'm not sure that they can. Thank you. The uh, last month's current work and still in play is the we're working on the base repair on Roxbury Road and Miller Road. We're just about done. I got one more day on Roxbury. I would have finished it today, but we get into other stuff. Um, and then we're going to move on to Midway Road between York Haven and Cly and Church Road. They're the two next roads that have the most base repair that needs done for the tar and chip later this year. So that's taken a lot of time working on that stuff. We are repairing random sinkholes that keep showing up along the inlets and, and along some other roads. We're working on at least two or three of them a week. Um, there's, with all the rain and the heavy rain that we get at times, we're, we're cleaning out some ditches and drainage swales that people are calling in complaining that maybe the pipes are blocked up or the, the swales aren't working quite right. So we're putting those fires out too. Um, so. Working it, mowing along the roads. We're a little bit behind with that because of the COVID stuff, but we're catching up slowly on mowing along the roads. So, and then the last thing we got up today, the advance warning signs for River Road and Midway, they're all up. So that stuff should be complete. That's all I got. Do you have any questions? Anybody got any questions for Scott? No. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks. Chief? Good evening, board, citizens out there in TV land. So, uh, for the month of would be May, our department handled 498 calls. Listing those calls by criteria, we had one burglary, nine thefts, five drug offenses, four simple assaults, one sexual assault, three domestic-related harassments, eight other harassments, and 31 other offenses. Additionally, the officers responded and investigated 436 other calls for service, including 17 domestic-related incidents, 11 traffic accidents, and they issued 29 traffic citations, 65 traffic warnings, and 12 non-traffic citations. They also made 16 misdemeanor and felony criminal arrests for the month. Um, additionally, since the last time that I was up here in front of you guys, I wanted to make you aware that our department did go through the Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police accreditation process, uh, which we were up for renewal. Uh, they reviewed our files. And, and everything was good. They come to the police department on July, I believe it's 18th, to review the station and make sure any other files or accreditation standards that they couldn't address um, remotely uh, to make sure that we're in compliance. And if you're not aware of the accreditation process, uh, we've been an accredited agency since 2000, I believe, four. Um, out of the 250 some agencies, I believe there's up there are up to 80 accredited departments throughout the state. Also, um, I spoke to uh, the supervisors, and it, it appears that uh, in the best interest of safety for the community, that we're most likely going to be canceling national night out. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, also. Um, we were just awarded our grant for our body-worn cameras um, from the state. So the next process, uh, step in the process is for us just to order them 
and then the state will reimburse us their their amount. It's a 50-50 grant, so they give us sixteen thousand dollars. So they're giving us sixteen thousand dollars, and we obviously have to, you know, pay the other sixteen thousand um, dollars. My hopes is that, you know, with what is occurring out there um, in society, it might be a little tough to get these these cameras because everyone's going to be like requesting them. So it might be a little bit longer for us to receive these cameras. But uh, I'm very optimistic that we will have them and implement it, you know, in the next couple of months. It all depends on the manufacturer. The policy is already written. It's already been reviewed by uh, not only the Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police, but a third party consultant to make sure that it's uh, in compliance with uh, the law as well as, you know, uh, standards throughout the, the U.S. And the last thing I just wanted to make you aware of is uh, of our, approximately three weeks ago, our Facebook was shut down by Facebook. So if you haven't seen any Facebook posts by our police department in the past three weeks, it's not because we didn't want to. We were locked out. We tried everything we possibly could in order to get this site back up and running. Um, while we were doing this, we spoke to at least one other police department who had the same thing happen to them. So today we uh, created a new page. Uh, you can access that information for our Facebook through our website at newburypd.org. It'll give you a link to go to our new Facebook page. Um, I have nothing else. Do you have any questions for me? Do we have any body cams now? We have uh, two body cams that we've been testing for the last four months. They're not worn on a daily basis, um, but we are testing them to see how long they would last as well as the, you know, how tough they were and how they would integrate with our current uh, mobile recording system. And how long do you have to keep those? Well, currently underneath Pennsylvania law, there's no, there's no set time where we have to get rid of the, the video footage for body-worn cameras like there is for mobile video recordings. Now, in the policy, I did put um, days or time limits um, when, we can, when we're going to release it and when we're not going to release it, meaning get rid of it. Um, because if we kept all the video, right. we would need a server the size of the room. Um, so I kept that in comp basically the same time frame as we are keeping our mobile video so that we wouldn't have to like juggle it back. And it all depends on how the officer tags the incident. Obviously, right now, I think we keep our a DUI arrest indefinitely. You know, uh, a traffic stops, whatever the law says, I'm off the top of my head, I think it's like 90 days. So these these would be working in conjunction to those. Um, and, the, and these body cameras, um, they merge the video from the officer's body camera as well as the in-car camera. So that when, we, when it's downloaded, there's two files there and I can, when I'm reviewing it, I can actually see both images side by side. And if other officers respond to the area for that incident, their images will actually merge into that so you can get three or four different perspectives, you know, on a specific okay. incident. Yeah. Not everybody needs one, just the people on duty? Is that how it goes? Uh, since we were, we were applying for a grant, I made sure that I would have one for every single officer. Oh, okay. Might be that way, it, I mean, Officers are just like anybody else. If you give something to them directly, they, they tend to take care of it a lot better than if it's uh, community property. Just like, you know, if you would lend your tool out to somebody, they're not gonna take care of it as, as well as you would, you know, yourself. Gotcha. So that's the premise that we, that we you know, the, that's what we thought that we would do, and we were probably easier to keep track of it too, I'd imagine. It absolutely is, because you don't have to switch back uh, on the camera who it's issued to. Yeah. Once it's downloaded, that their name's in it, it's their camera. Any other questions? I'm good. Okay, thank you, Chief. Fire and EMS, I guess there's nobody here from there. Jeff, do you have anything other than what's in your report? I have some stuff to ask Jeff, so okay, go right ahead. Uh, Paddletown Road, 
we discussed that with Tiffany. I just want to keep everybody informed that lives in that road what's going on so we can tell them what's going on. We have contacted uh, Door County Conservation uh, with the shutdown and the COVID-19. They have been uh, working remotely. However, I was advised uh, by the county that they are going to coordinate with uh, DEP uh, regarding that property uh, because DEP has more than the enforcement of it uh, because we really haven't got a response back from the property owner in question. Yeah. Our hands are tied with the road crew because we can't do anything to they do their That's correct. reports and That's fines, correct. whatever. So. Yes. No, no improvements can be made to the road until we get that to property is... Approval right from there. DEP and your county. Yes. Okay. I got a call today, too, from R.J. Fisher's office that they were going to start looking at that. So oh, really? Yeah. And that's probably the fifth engineering company has called us within the last year. Uh, they reach out and they contact various engineers to start a project, but it's never completed. Never finished. So How long has this been going on? Is it seven years? The, the house itself has been going on for about seven years. Yeah. Um, it's still not completed. Um, they do have an outstanding building permit, but there hasn't been any activity whatsoever on the property other than trying to control some of the stormwater runoff, but that was only a temporary fix until they came up with the design that they were requested to do. Yeah, whatever, whatever they're doing now is not working, for sure. No, it's not. No. Yeah. Um, Susquehanna riding, we need uh, to find out what's going on with that for the ATVs. I, I did not, Jeff, I did not get a chance to, I, I, to if, reach If Bill can second. answer that, um, what this is, is uh, Susquehanna Rotties, when the, the final plan was approved, they have a riding trail that was made into that subdivision. Correct. The riding trail was specific for horses, uh, no motorized vehicles or no motorized. Just foot traffic. Just foot traffic for horses. Uh, we were contacted by the Homeowners Association that they were under the impression that uh, they could use it for ATVs, uh, motorized vehicles, et cetera. There is a comment in the, the recorded subdivision that says that there is no motor vehicles permitted. So I did reach out to our engineer uh, and, and I did also uh, reach out to our solicitor regarding it because our feelings are they're, they're gonna have to come back to the board and possibly the planning commission uh, because it is recorded now a recorded document that says they can do it now they want to change it uh, question can everybody hear you I, don't, I, can, I can hear you fine but you don't have the mic yeah, well, I can, you oh you can to hear it there okay <laughs> just, wondering, just making sure no, I mean it, if you'd like uh, I mean we're, we're getting information that one of the developers is telling them to go ahead and do it. Uh, where it's putting us into a situation because we have no control over because it's not turned over to the township itself as far as the roads and that. Uh, but the, the private area, like the trail, mm -hmm. is a reported document saying they cannot use it with motorized vehicles. Yeah, because there's people that bought houses in there for lived there for years or a couple of years. And, and, and they bought them for the purpose of the riding trails. Or the purpose of having a nice big backyard and not have to worry about your kid being ran over by a side by side or a four wheel or flying down through the trail. That's correct. And that's why I reached out to our solicitor because I... I don't think people mind golf carts. That's when they get the side by sides and the go carts and the... Jeff, you want to switch the camera back? slow <laughs> okay that's what's burning my phone up over here by saying that <laughs> gotta get the camera back so. i think they want to see my smiling face <laughs> so we, we are we are digging into this to find out what can be done and what can't be done we are lucky and i i did advise the president of the homeowner association that i would get back with her uh, i knew they 
they retained an attorney involving us who's looking into the matter too. But mm -hmm. as far as the township's concerned, um, I mean, it, it is on a subdivision plan where it can be used. So it's something that they're going to have to change if they want to change. I, the township can't just say, go ahead and do it. Uh, it has to be approved. And I think there's a process they have to go through. I would think uh, so, to yeah. get that removed from their reported plan. Yeah. I mean, these, these are homes that aren't, aren't $150,000 homes. These are, you know, are, up there pretty good in price. Yeah. And yes. the people, of course, that have the trail in their backyards, most of them have an issue with it. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so safe it, rate. It is enforceable then right now? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it says on the plan they can't. Well, I'm uh, guessing it's enforceable then. But I, I, I wouldn't know. Well, the the how plan would be enforceable by the township under the subdivision ordinance, uh, but they probably do, and, and what I didn't get a chance to do yet and I need to do is pull the Homeowners Association documents and see what's in there. Because the homeowners, it's probably in the Homeowners Association documents as well, and that would be a f enforceable by the homeowners. But what if they changed it? We we can't send the police department to do anything about that. Right. It, it, the, I mean, it's it's not going to be a criminal violation of anything. It's going to be like a, like a zoning violation. Yeah. But if that, I, I mean, if that note is on the plan, I was, I was just trying to look through to see if I could find it. But if that note is on the plan, uh, the township could cite any homeowners are in violation of it, but if the HOA has also violated it, I mean, you, you could potentially cite, um, cite both of them for that if they've changed the HOA documents. So we can pull the HOA documents. Can you get a little closer to the mic? Please, we thank can, you. We can pull the HOA documents and, uh, and see what the, the current version of the HOA documents say. That'll, we'll be able to see if they've amended it or made any changes like that. Are, you, are they allowed to change something without us approving it? For the HOA, they, uh, they, they are what, I don't know what these documents say. What I typically, typically when they do an HOA as part of a subdivision, the ordinance says that that HOA document has to be approved by the township initially. Um, when we review those HOA documents, there are certain provisions that we want in they give the township rights for things like stormwater if they fail to maintain stormwater facilities or other public improvements the township would have rights to go in and uh, maintain it and place municipal liens on the properties for any of that work we usually put in then as well that if there's any amendment to those provisions that they have to come back to the board for approval but in general, other revisions, the HOA documents, they typically wouldn't have to come back for. Now, if, if the revision of the HOA document is, is contra something that's in the subdivision plan, then they obviously have to come back to the board for permission to do that because you would have to waive the requirement or the restriction in the subdivision plan. So in this case, they probably did probably would have to come back to you I'd imagine they paid dues correct I yeah believe so they would have to um, they're just gonna have to look into it and yeah. they can get back to us gotcha uh, another thing save right uh, went down to their place today they got the new fan installed new uh, not the fan but the vent system uh, okay. that did make a big difference and I will tell you that uh, our engineer and I went down and met with them and their engineer uh, the beginning of the month, and they are coming up with an as-built plan uh, so we can get a better layout of the as-built, and then uh, we're going to start looking into the other things that need to be addressed uh, for zoning uh, that was required. Yeah. Uh, from the but the fan, that vent system made a difference in there, so it's pretty quiet. That's all I have. Okay. You're up, Andy. I.
just to highlight a couple of things uh, from my report, I did meet with uh, Jane and we went over various accounts of the township uh, and uh, we'll be working on uh, a summary of uh, some of those or of that meeting for the board uh, at some point in one of the upcoming meetings. Uh, we also, I also just put in an update on a couple of uh, ordinances that have been discussed and I'll leave it up to the board if you want to move forward with any discussion of those or, uh, or not. Uh, there's nothing formally on the agenda for them tonight. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's all I have unless there's any other questions from the report. Well, we had discussed before about Traditions Bank um, taking over some of our accounts. Um, that was a while back, and they have a municipal department, um, and they they pretty well versed on different accounts and what they're for. I don't know if we want to talk to them, see what they have to offer. I I I would defer to to the board and, and to Jane. What you want to do with that? I mean, they're certainly a reputable bank, and I'm sure they have municipal services. Uh, so I, I don't really have I don't really have a strong opinion on on uh, which bank the township t should use. If a bank is if you do move any accounts there, there would just there would have to be a resolution from the board uh, appointing them as an authorized depository institution, and we'd have to make sure the proper collateral is in place for those accounts, right. the same as we've done with members first. Well, what I was really talking about was them coming in and telling us what, you know, they can do for us and then we make a decision as a board on whether or not to go forward. Yeah, weren't we, weren't we going to do that before? We yeah, we were, but I think and COVID hit. Stuff mm -hmm. and yeah. So do we want to move forward with that and get uh, Traditions Bank in, maybe to meet with Jane? and? I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'll call them, give them your number, or I'll, I'll give you the number and I think they're up and running pretty good now. Tony thinks we should probably look at traditions also. So, oh, for for everybody, uh, Tony was unable to make it due to a work commitment, so he's watching the meeting and texting me and burning my phone up. So. Okay. Uh, anything else, Andy? I, I don't believe so. Okay. There's no other questions. I have a question for um, Jeff. I got an email from a gentleman named Tom Powers, and he said he called you. But I don't remember what the chicken ordinance says, and I, I couldn't find it. Yeah, and I got the email too from him. Uh, what he wants is he, he basically wants the board to waive his uh, requirements. It, our ordinance requires a, a minimum of a half an acre, uh, allowing up to six hens. Uh, he's under the half acre. He has, I believe, 0.38 uh, is what he has. So he is under the half acre. Uh, and, and Really, I, I told him that he would have to request approval from the board. So that's probably the email that you got. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think if you approve it for one, right. less than a half an acre, you might as well not have an ordinance uh, because they're going to be all over the township. And one of the, the things. Can he have two hands? Well, you really shouldn't have any. But that, so he needs the. He, he has to have the minimum half acre. acre. And, and the reason for it, and this was the ordinance, is because we have residents in the townhomes having backyard chickens that mm -hmm. uh, obviously was not a half acre <laughs> lot. And, and just turned that into a nightmare. And, and it know. just became a right. disaster. So. Well, I just wanted to address it so he didn't think we were ignoring No, and I, and I just voiced some my yeah. concerns that if you, I do, agree. It, if I you agree. do it, you're, you're going to open it up. I agree. They stink. <laughs> They're paying the butt. I wouldn't want to live the sun. <laughs> yeah. So. No ducks are messy. <laughs> yes, they are. Okay.
Bill. Okay, in my report tonight, the only thing I um, would like to discuss is the traffic signal updates. Um, we did finally get, this is for Old Trail and the uh, 83 southbound ramp and Old Trail and Pines Road or the northbound ramp. Um, we finally did get uh, an estimate back from Perks for that work. Um, it, it was $2,625, which came in under the estimate. Um, so this would be for the retiming of those two signals that we got approved through PennDOT. Um, and the, it was uh, through the county. They had, had, had done the work. Uh, then this week, we got an email, or I guess it was last week, we got an email from the county saying if we wanted to put that whole process on hold, we could because of the COVID situation right now and traffic not being you know, normal. Um, but I think it's our recommendation that we just move forward with it and have the retiming done. Um, there will be a, a two-step process there then where um, after PERCS does the retiming, um, PennDOT will come out with the county and um, Pannoni um, and just make sure the retiming was done correctly. And then later at some point, um, once we think traffic is um, back to normal, um, at that point, um, the county is also has it in their budget for um, the traffic engineer, which is Pannoni, to come out and just verify that it is working as intended. So what I would ask tonight is that um, either under new business or now, you could just give us the authorization to go ahead and redo those retimings. Well, the gas companies must think that the COVID thing's over. They raised the price of gas 25 cents in the last three yeah. weeks. So I'd like to see us move on with that. It took us three months just to get an estimate. <laughs> Is that a motion? No. Were we talking about the traffic lights getting fixed? The yeah, the traffic lights getting fixed down here. Where's, which one's that? Old Trail and the Pines Road, Old Trail and the ramp. South, okay. the ramp. Southbound and northbound ramps, those lights there. Yeah, these down here need timed. Mm -hmm. sure. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm making a motion to get them done. Second. Any more questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's all I had, unless you guys have any other questions for me. I think we're good. All right. Mr. Zyder, it's your turn. The only thing I have to add um, to my report is I just want permission to uh, solicit quotes for fencing down at the plant. Uh, the last couple of years, our DEP inspection, they asked us to enclose the uh, pole building and our propane tank, and I never got pricing for it. So just looking to get three quotes for probably add about 150 foot of fence and move our power gate outside of the pole barn. That way, everything is going to be enclosed and, and secure. So I just need it. But it sounds like we don't have a choice, right? We don't have a choice, DP's making it do it. They've been trying to get us well, to do that for a while. So. It's, not, it's not mandatory, they just suggest it. So. But it's been, I mean, we have the money in the budget for capital improvements that we're not going to spend this year, so it's a good time to get quotes for it. So. And when you find three people that'll do fence, contact the chief, because he's looking for some fence, too. I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else? Because yeah. we had, we can't get people to call back. Really? Yeah. I was going to ask if anybody had any recommendations to for companies. I mean, I was going to try. I used security Tyson fence fencing. out. Of he ain't calling us back. Do you want to call back? No. Who was it? Tyson Fence. Oh, he did call me back. Uh, he'll call you he back. Called cell phone. So I called his cell phone twice. He'll call back. And that's been yeah. well since last Thursday. <laughs> I, I actually know Tyson fencing. Though I mean, they'll, they'll aren't they having problems getting get product? I have no idea. I mean, they might be. Yeah, my sister just got a fence, and they told her they're having problems getting this stuff in because people have been off work. Okay. Security fence. That's the case. Of, yeah, probably security, security fence. fence probably they're a good one too. I mean, demanding right now. And okay. they do power gates and stuff too. So I mean, I'll solicit at least three quotes and go from there. I'm 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 okay. You guys okay yeah. with it? Or yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other questions for me? Nope, I don't. You guys got anything for me? I got a question. Um, 
Jay down here to uh, what's it called now? Secret Cellar. Uh, here, Newbury Town. Yeah. Is it Jiffy? Cigarette Cellar. Is it uh, Cigarette Cellar? The old Axon or Marble or whatever? Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. trying to get that um, hoarding tank in there for the, the is to make the chickens. Do you know what you have to do to get that taken care of? He needs, what he has there, he's tied onto the public sewer already with a grinder pump. Yeah. So he thinks he has a grease tank outside, but it's actually a 300 gallon grinder pump tank that pumps to the sewer system. He needs to put in a thousand gallon concrete outside tank, grease tank. That's, they came in here probably six months ago or so, it'd be in the minutes, and they requested it, um, something smaller than that, and the board denied it. Is there a reason why it has to be so big? Uh, it's just in our ordinance about, it's either in our ordinance or our rates, rules, and regs about anybody that produces any grease or high VOD content that they have to have a 1,000 gallon outside interceptor. And, and people don't pump those very often. And he, you, do, you do inspections on them? Yeah, we do uh, inspections. Yeah. Tried to do them twice a year on all the ones in the township, indoor and outdoor ones. Yeah, so do you? At least that minimum size, it gives you a time period so when you can make sure that you're not getting grease into the yeah, I understand the problem with the grease in the right. sewer, but uh, uh, Jeff and I talked about this, uh, putting like a, what would you say, putting a lean, or what's that called? What's that called? A, bond. a bond on it, yeah, so it makes them do that. Is that, does that work in that situation or not? It makes sure it gets it pumped every so often or? It's a little different situation. I mean, we charge a, an escrow uh, for people with septic systems. Yeah. Uh, that they, it's a, more of a guarantee that they're going to be pumped out. But I, I think the cruise trap is a little different because you're dealing with a commercial property as opposed to a residential property where they require water. You know, if they do have septic in a commercial, they have to get the, uh, the bond. At the time that uh, the Exxon came in here, it, it was almost two years ago. I mean, it's been a, it's been a while. Uh, their contractor actually came in today. Um, Ned? I believe that's his one. Yeah. Uh, so we, we referred him to Brent, and Brent basically told him that he needs to have his, uh, his tank. It's, it's common in the township. Yeah. I mean, that's every everybody that comes in Changes use or comes that to be in ground too. Right? Everybody has the outside tanks now. But yeah. to be in ground, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, there's very few that are grandfathered from like the old mall, the old Valley Green Mall. Some of those have indoor, um, you know, under sink small ones. They just they just don't handle the capacity, you know. And it's pretty standard throughout other municipalities that I work with to have that size. It's not like, <coughs> yeah. Newberry's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. The problem is if you okay it and then he puts a full blown restaurant in there later, you're not going to be able to maintain it. And the next thing you know, you have grease going in your sewer system. Yes, yeah, so that could be pretty so poor or, from them guys. Or, or we turn into the situation we okay it for him and then somebody does somebody put the full blown right. restaurant in and wants to put a 30 gallon tank in. So. Correct. Gotcha. That's all I have. That's it. Okay. Thank you. We don't have a manager. Jane, you got anything to add to your report? Yeah, it's up to you. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Some, um, we continue to monitor here at the township the amount of income that will be coming in through the township. I believe that everyone is aware of the amount of uh, shutdowns um, that were happening during COVID, the amount of people that were laid off. That definitely affects the earned income tax received by the uh, township for uh, the residents that live within the township. Uh, I happened to be on a board, uh, township manager's meeting uh, Zoom meeting the other day, and they were also di discussing the fact that they're questioning about the decrease in liquid fuels money with the amount of gas prices being so low and people not buying gas for a period of quite a few months. So that will definitely affect liquid fuels income that the township normally um, gets. That's one thing that we 
probably didn't think of until I happened to be on that township ma uh, meeting. Uh, the second thing is is the um, kudos to Tom, um, who is with the EMA. He's not here. He did receive the grant money for the trailer that the township was able to get for um, EMA. So that money did come in, and um, they bought a really nice trailer in the event of any type of emergency situation with the township. So Tom was able to secure that grant. Um, what did come up, I guess, earlier and is the audit, and I was going to comment on this tonight that the audit began for the township that's required. It began in January, and then um, with the preliminary, the work with field work was done in February, and then again, we, they um, were closed, the CPA firm, for a period of time for, and worked remotely for social distancing, so they were not allowed to do field visits to be able to finish the audit. They just recently picked that back up in May, and uh, she was getting some of the final pieces from me yesterday, uh, as soon much as yesterday. <laughs> so it's a l rather large audit, encompasses a lot of things in the township up until like looking at pensions and things like that. So um, well, that should be released soon. And again, that's the annual audit that's required by the township. So that's the reason for the delay in that. And like um, Dave had said, that normally is done by this time. but. COVID stopped it for a period of almost three months, so that's a long time. So um, our QuickBooks that we use here to count to do the accounting is uh, being at its light, life end, I guess, is what you want to call it. Everything, all service, all uh, software packages always have a time when they come back and they're no longer going to be serviced. So we're going to be looking into a, an upgrade there, and if we do get an upgrade, we'd like to make a little bit of changes in the accounting that we do here that computers can be um, linked together easily, And uh, but it, that's something that we probably be doing within the next year, so. All right, and as far as grant monies are concerned, uh, we have, we're gonna be applying, it's gonna be approved tonight uh, to Pima or FEMA in an attempt to recover some of the um, monies that the township put out for protection for COVID, there was money made available. And that would include things that even the police got, the masks, uh, the highway department got masks, all the cleaning supplies that we have for here. So it's nice that uh, they are putting money, grant monies out there for you to be able to apply to be able to get. In addition, we applied for grant money for through the Department of Justice for uh, to be able to be uh, possibly be reimbursed for the two laptops that the police had to get. Uh, Steve, I don't want to take your thunder here. He's, he said, go ahead. Uh, the police department currently operates off desktops, computers, but now with the COVID changes, they have been required to testify virtually, which requires microphones and cameras, so they had to go out and purchase laptops. We found out that possibly the Department of Justice down in Washington may be able to reimburse us for those laptops. So we did apply and sent that down there and hopefully we'll hear something. If not, um, Dave had just uh, forwarded something to me from York County, which I spoke to the, York, the gentleman at the York County office. He told me to apply at FEMA and the Department of Justice first. And if we don't get reimbursed, there may be monies made available to townships going forward. Good. So that's a possibility then afterwards if we're not, if we're denied for you know, other reasons. And then the last thing I have is we're going to be looking into a community block grant that we took advantage of years ago for projects that maybe the highway could take advantage of to be able to uh, maybe make some repairs to some roads and streets in the township. So that we'll be looking into shortly then also. And um, within the near future, I guess within the next week or so, we'll be making the bond payments that are due for the township for the sewer and for the... Uh, they're the annual payments. And uh, we're also with Dave, uh, help. we're working on uh, renewing, the insurance renewal is gonna be coming up for the township, and that's the insurance renewal for property, workers comp, auto, and things like that. So it was advised by our insurance company to create a safety committee you know, for the township. Those kind of certified safety committees do allow for discounts on your insurance going forward. So that's another project that we're gonna be working on is uh, creating that, so busy. Any questions? Thank you, Jane. No, no. Thanks, Jane. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Okay, under under the supervisors, 
Um, Claire, do you got anything? No, I'm good. I don't have any. Mike, seen? No. All right. Quickly, I just want to go over. Uh, we did conduct interviews. We offered the job to somebody. Uh, they have since turned the position down. We're going to have to discuss again what our plan is going forward. Uh, we will discuss that probably in an executive session. Uh, let me just look here and check my notes. I mentioned earlier that we're going to work on hiring a, an assistant uh, for any office to replace Christy, who was given a promotion. And I already discussed the audit, so that's really about all I have under the supervisor's report. Okay, we're going to move on to old business. Uh, under old business, we have listed the noise ordinance. I personally think that we should hold off on that until Correct. we can allow the public to come in so that, you know, we can get public comment uh, rather than trying to do that through the computer and the delays and everything through the system. So right. if everybody's in agreement with that, I think we should mark that in for again for next month. Possibly we'll be able to be allowed to have people in starting then. And as you can tell, I'm not very quick with computers and phones and all that. So I'm trying to do the best I can. And also, I guess we'll just do this on our supervisor's report. Uh, is it okay if we get rid of the police car that we replaced that Jeff was using, the office vehicle? We have an extra car out here oh. right at the time because oh. we uh steve moved over one of the his cars when he got his replacement and now we have an extra car that so if we sell this does it please get the money for that yeah yeah i'm good okay you good with that magazine yes i am okay steve you want to put that on municipal or however we Minisibid. okay that'll be on municipal okay uh, anything under new business? Okay, under new business, we need to approve a resolution 2015. Let me get back in business here again. That's for the grant application for... That's know, for the grant application grant. for uh, recovery of funds spent for the COVID-19 protection. Did we meet all the requirements, Jane? We but it'll still be subject to audit by the PMA, by PMA, you know, that Okay. Looking for a motion? I'll make a motion that uh, we approve Re resolution 2020-15, COVID-19. I'll second the motion. Any more questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, under new business, approve a resolution 20, 2016, Department of Justice grant to help pay for the laptop computers that we had to buy for the police department for the, uh, them to, con to be in contact with the uh, sheriff's office and the courts. I'll make the motion to pass the resolution. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Approve the resolution 2020 the Janie change for the signers for the current Board of Supervisors to add Jane Deemer so that they, when she calls them and asks some questions, they'll answer them for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. since she takes care of that maybe she should be probably involved in that mm -hmm. I'll 
I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 2020-17. And I'll second it. Any more questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Tony wanted to know is the money go to the police department or is it ours or how's it been done in the past for the car? Okay. Where I purchased vehicles out of it, would just go back into that line item. Okay. That's how it's done in the past. Okay. Hopefully, with the delay, that catches up. So, if he has any more questions, I'll see what I can do. We don't have any. Oh, the Penn Waste surcharge proposal. Uh, that was the thing that Penn Waste had proposed. We got an email from Penn Waste. They said that. Uh, there is going to be no changes to the current contract at this time. So that is a mute point and can be removed from the agenda. Any uh, thing under subdivision of land development? No. Okay. Guess we want to make a motion. Somebody want to make a motion to pay the bills? I'll make a motion to pay the bills listed. Looking for a second. Second. Any more questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, at this time we're going to go into executive session. Uh, we have a few things on here to discuss in executive session. So we'll be back with anything that we do in executive session. Thanks.
All right, we're back from executive session. Uh, during the executive session, we uh, discussed some personnel issues. Uh, at this time, uh, as part of his personnel issues, I'm looking for a motion. As far as Jeff. Oh, I'll make the motion to give him the 40 hour or to make him full time. Okay. And did you want to set a rate of pay? Uh, I guess we're taking. Give him a two dollar increase. Two dollars increase. Two dollar increase. That's a week, right? Two dollars a week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all in <laughs> oh, I need a second on that motion. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> yes. Any questions on that motion? It is per hour. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, I think that pretty much covers everything. We're I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. I'll Wait, second that. we talk about the part-time girl? Oh, okay. We need to make a motion to hire that part-time assistant. Oh. To, what is it, 16 hours for the summer? Do you want to 16 hours? 16 a week. 16 a week? Yeah. 16, yeah, 16, 16 a week. Hours a week. Yes. And ten dollars an hour. Yes. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any questions on that? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And basically so you understand what that is, we're gonna hire somebody.